Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, this short video is about some questions you need to ask and hopefully some answers as well about choosing printers for printing artwork. Now I've produced lots of printer reviews and I've looked at individual printers but the general process of printing artwork is something I get asked about a lot. Uh, in particular what printer should I choose to print my art? Now ignoring the fact we don't necessarily know what sort of art it is and what sorts of paper and things will suit it best, I can still come up with a general answer and that is it is not the printer that matters. Now any modern printer and the example I've got here is a Canon Pro 200, um, it could as well be an Epson one, no difference at all. I've covered lots of aspects of this in different videos but this is about what you need to do to print some artwork and in the example I'm going to choose um, this is a watercolour uh, that was scanned um, I did it for one of my other reviews but it was a watercolour that was produced by a friend of mine and I used it for producing some greetings cards now the general case this this illustrates a lot of issues with uh, how you would go about printing things how you go about preparing the image for printing which is an important part along with paper choice and things anyway as i said this is a pro 200 it's a dye base printer i could use a pro 300 which is a pigment ink printer now if you're selling your prints you might prefer to look at a pigment ink printer because the archival properties of the inks the prints themselves may not necessarily be much better or if they are very few people would notice apart from a direct comparison um, it's about whether they look okay to you as the artist who's reproducing your own work now looking at how I'm going to do this uh, I've got 200 here 300 let's say would be uh, pigment based I could look at something like the Epson ET8550 now that's got ink tanks in it so it's cheaper to run it has a pigment black ink but it's got dye based inks this is purely dye based inks if you want to go uh, another step up you could look at the Epson P700 which is a very high-end printer good excellent printer um, a bit more expensive but once again you've got look at ink costs so as I say there are a lot more things to look at than just what's the printer like for making prints now I'm going to show this example here this is a scanned piece of art now there are quite a few difficulties when you're scanning um, artwork certainly if it's on textured paper now I would prefer if I was doing reproducing this artwork for myself I would prefer to photograph it with a high resolution camera if you haven't got a high resolution camera, take several pictures of it and stitch them together. That's one way of actually you know, increasing the resolution. Um, you will rarely get a complaint from me that a picture has too much resolution in it. It's normally that it hasn't enough resolution. If you're going to photograph it, look into aspects of color management. Now this is a color check card. Now I take this with me, this lives, one of these lives in my camera bag for my industrial photography and quite a lot of my other photography. I will take on location a picture with this in the picture so that I can check color afterwards. If you're using it for art reproduction, what you can use this for is to make a custom camera profile. And this will improve the accuracy of the color rendition. I say will, I should say should. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that. There's some free software here. This is the Calibrite version. Previously, it was produced by X-Rite. Uh, free software for doing the profiling. I've got articles about how to do the camera profiling which I'll link to in the uh, notes that go with this video if you want any more information. But I say this is something I would use for uh, photographing artwork. Now for photographing artwork in general I want to keep the uh, lighting fairly flat. Now with a textured paper uh, this shows up in this scan and this is after I've worked on the scan a little bit in uh, Photoshop, um, cleaned it up a bit. Uh, I used the view scan software to drive the scanner. This was scanned on the scanner of the Epson 8550 so it doesn't need to be a really high-end scanner but you do need to be careful with textured uh, artwork in that the lighting of the scanner in basic scanners can emphasize the paper structure 
that you may not want to reproduce in your image. Ideally, you only want to reproduce in the image where you've applied, where you've drawn on it, or where you've painted on it. In this example, this being a watercolour. And there's a few pencil marks. If you zoom in close enough, you can see a few pencil marks. So say, this is not my artwork. A friend of mine did it, and um, I reproduced this for a Christmas card. But once we've scanned it in, um, the next key element, once again, it's nothing to do with the printer, is colour accuracy. Now, this does vary. Um, we need to edit it here. I need, ideally, if I'm concerned of colour accuracy, it helps that my monitor has been calibrated. Once again, I've got stuff about that. Um, you, you know, if, you, if the colour is wrong on the monitor, then I can adjust it as much as I like here, and it's likely to come out different on the printer. Um, one of the things we want to aim for, although technically you can't actually do it, is so that what I see here is going to be pretty close to what comes out of the printer. And that's all about colour management. Now I've got lots of stuff about colour management as well. Um, once again, independent of printer choice essentially. Makes very little difference for that. Now I've got this image here. Now, one of the problems with uh, some colours is when you print them, you get a bit of a drift. In particular, sometimes blues can go a little purple, or purples can drift slightly to the blue side. A whole lot of different reasons for it, um, but one of the ways of getting around it, and I, I will show just this example quickly here, and this is in Photoshop, is that I could actually do this in a you know, much more economic bit of software. I could use something like Affinity Photo, excellent bit of software. That'll allow you to do stuff. If you're getting into image editing, uh, it's a great bit of software. One other thing I say, I'm doing this on a proper computer. Forget doing stuff like this of any quality or accuracy on iPads and the like. They are singularly useless for accurate color reproduction. They may look good, but the chances of printing something off an iPad and getting it come out accurately, well, it might work. Then again, it might not work. There is no reliable, consistent colour management for iPads and use. I don't care how much you like using them. You need a real computer to edit the image. If you are concerned about colour accuracy and colour quality, um, it's a choice you make. If you don't want a real computer, then accept you're going to get some haphazard reproduction on any printer. Once again, nothing to do with the printer. If I have an image on an iPad and I print it on this, and if I print it on a much, much more expensive pigment ink printer, the chances of an accurate reproduction are about the same, i.e. 50-50 flip a coin. I don't know. I've tried it a few times and I've never been able to come up with a reliable printing method. It looks like Apple just decided they weren't going to bother about proper colour management because it's all about show for iPads. That's what they're there for. This is running on a Mac. Um, I could do the same on a PC. Affinity Photo, easy. I happen to use so, uh, Photoshop, so hence we've got Photoshop here in this example. And this is just a simple adjustment layer. This is a hue adjustment layer, and I'm selecting the blues. Now I can select this in detail, but I'm going to select just the blues here. And I'll do this as an extreme so it shows even on the monitor here. Um, if I want to change the colour, oh yes, we've gone changed, as you can see, and it goes to a, a deeper blue there. Purely depends on what you want to do as to get it right. Now, this adjustment you may not need to do, but I just mentioned this because I know that sometimes, particularly when reproducing colours uh, of paints, um, some oil paints, cobalt blue is an absolute horror to try and photograph and reproduce. You can get effects like this. But this is just a way of tweaking the colours just slightly so they come out. I would need to adjust this, do a test print, look at it, think is that right and go back to it. This is one of those things where you just have to try and adjust and tweak things. Now, it may come out fine first time, it may well do I've, if I've got a good paper profile and I've got everything set up right. But I would notice that no matter how well you've set up all your colour management, that's your printer profiles, your paper choice, your screen, your editing, sometimes some pigments are just tricky to reproduce. Um, except that 
and adjust it and tweak it until you get something you like. Because remember the result is do you get what comes out of the printer? Is that adequate for what you want? That's an important point for it. Now, I get rid of that layer there. Just That's just to, just to show the concept of that. Now, I'm going to print this. Not I could print it directly from Photoshop, but I'm going to use the Canon print software. Uh, professional print layout, dead easy to use. Has a comprehensive user guide. I've covered it in reviews for all the Canon printers I've looked at. Similarly, if you were doing this on an Epson printer, there's an Epson print layout software. Works very similarly. It also is excellent and is nice and easy to use. And I've got lots of stuff looking at using it on different printers. But the whole point is here, I just want to print this. This is a big image. Um, I've scanned it at the highest resolution I can get. So it takes a moment or two to open up, particularly since I'm running it on an oldish laptop, which is connected up to this big screen here. It's just loading the image up. As I say, this is a large file slowish oldish laptop but here we go we've loaded it up now in this layer and I've got loads if you if you're interested in using this particular software or the Epson software look at the detailed reviews that I've done of any particular printer because it's subtly different on each one but the, here I'm just going to print on this the Pro 200 I've the tra image has been transferred over to the software I've selected a media type of heavyweight fine art paper I've set the screen here for A3 Plus when I've loaded the sheet in the back for that size. I've selected the printer. Print quality is high. I want to use that one. It's for, on this particular printer, you can only set high for art papers like this. In terms of profile, I've picked a profile for this, which is a HP Aquarelle paper. It's a textured watercolor style paper. Um, I'm testing it because I happen to have a profile that I made for it. If you're interested in getting profiles, check the printer reviews I've done. I've got boxes of this paper from a review from years ago, so I quite often use it in reviews, which means I quite often have ICC profiles. If you're looking for a paper, for buying a paper for your printer, check that you can get an ICC profile. ICC profiles just are what in a way help translate between what the screen can display and what the printer can manage. So they're an important part of consistent and accurate color printing. Uh, you don't have to make them yourself. Many paper suppliers will supply paper profiles, but check that out. And one thing, don't try printing on just ordinary watercolor paper or any paper that is just, you know, just sort of cartridge paper, any, it needs to be inkjet paper. Uh, and that goes for any of the printers I've looked at. You put a rubbish paper from an inkjet printing perspective into any of these printers, you will get a rubbish print out of it. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, there's no getting around it, there's no using cheap paper. You want a good print, you need good paper. Anyway, I've set this, I've set the layout, I've let it set the size. I'm just going to press print. It gives me confirmation of the settings here. And it may take a little while to come through for the printer because as I said, it's a big image and it's a slowish laptop. In terms of the scan, and it's uh, coming up here, just telling me that it's uh, thinking about it. In terms of the scanning, I scanned this to a large color space. Uh, the colors here are okay. The colors here would fit even in sRGB. For some artwork you may not be able to fit into smaller color spaces. This one, this particular image will. Larger um, color spaces are generally easier to work with, Adobe 98 Pro Photo. Uh, but I won't go into that in any detail other than to just say it's part of your scanning. So, uh, in how you might ed choose to edit images. After a while, we have the printer wake up. It'll do uh, the little dance that printers do and should draw the sheet in. Now, I'm printing on A3 Plus sheets here. All the decent quality photo printers are 13 inch width and above. Doesn't mean I couldn't print on A4 sheets if I have smaller things. I can print greetings cards on these and the likes. And one thing I have noticed, obviously, that if you take an image like this, which is a watercolour, and say the original watercolour was that big, and you print it to that big, as I'm going to do here, then the quality 
may not look as good because you're enlarging the brush strokes, everything in it. Yet when you take a picture like this and then you reduce it down and put it on, say, a greeting card, the extra sharpness you get really comes through and it looks a lot more detailed than it is. But that depends very much on your own artwork. Now I'm just as I say, I'm using this example here, which was uh, painted by a friend of mine a few years ago, which she wanted producing on greetings cards. It looks great on greetings cards, but I wanted to use it as an example here for printing artwork on an art type paper. One little tip with these papers, uh, the papers need to be coated for inkjet use. Uncoated paper rarely works well on inkjets. Some papers, and this is one of them, it looks very similar on each surface. How do you know which is the print side? Well, what you can do is just slightly moisten your finger, touch the corner, and you will find that the print side feels slightly tacky compared with the non-print side. Um, just a quick check if you ever get stuck, get some paper and for some reason you've forgotten which side is which, and it happens, I've done it, uh, the, the quick test is always the damp finger test. You don't lick your finger a lot, but you know, just enough just to fit, you'll feel a slight difference in tackiness between one side and the other. Here comes the image and it's coming out and it's looking pretty good. As I say, it's enlarged. Um, the colours are looking pretty good here. I've got the uh, reds of the berries on the holly. That's pretty much spot on here. Given we've got a video looking at a screen and a video looking at a print under what is um, LED halogen replacement lighting, um, I'm hoping the colours will look the same on this screen and what you see coming out here, but I wouldn't necessarily guarantee it. One of the things is always check in the lighting you intend to use. So if you're, sh if you're showing an image like this and it's going to be viewed under old fashioned tungsten lighting, for example, or fluorescent lighting, check how your print looks into that different lighting because it will vary slightly. That does vary between printers as well. But essentially, if I had produced this print on Canon Pro 200 here, Pro 300, Epson 8550, Epson P700 and I put two of them next to each other on top of the printer here, walked away, told somebody to juggle them up between, so randomise which was which and I came back. I would probably have some difficulty in actually deciding which printer had produced which image. Now, if I got my USB microscope out and looked at the details of the ink dots, then yes, I probably could. But in the real world, people don't bother with such things. So, take it from me that I could produce an acceptable image on any of those printers. And if I produce an image that looks wrong, it is my fault. Now, a lot of people don't, uh, and I'm sorry artists, um, it, I've come across this more uh, people from the art side than from photography, um, they go, well, I don't want to do all this technical stuff, I just want to press print. Tough. You've got a choice. You learn some of the basics about this, and it really is not that difficult. You find someone to print it for you. Perfectly acceptable. Or you just press print on your iPad and go, mm, it doesn't look right. It's up to you. Um, now, I'm always happy to help people out on stuff like this. So if you've got any questions, pre please do let me know. Um, because it's, in fact, it was a question from somebody this morning that gave me the idea to do this specific video. So please do, I don't mind uh, um, answering questions. Uh, drop me a line at Northlight if you like. If you've got a printer and you want profiles, check the written review that I've done because it will list all the profiles I've made and they're available on request for personal use. But there we go. There is the print. Um, well, that looks pretty similar. I'm not seeing any major differences there. Um, obviously, because it's been printed larger than the original, it's not as sharp, but that looks fine. So I hope that's been of help. Um, say so I've got lots of other reviews and articles. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. That helps. And um, thank you very much.